Hello. Hello. We are back with Weddings Unedited. Mm, mm, we mm, are here mm. doing our dance. I'm Alicia. And I'm Courtney. And we are going to be talking about... I'm really excited. The history and traditions and superstitions of weddings. This is the episode that we are excited to dive into because honestly, I actually... <laughs> Courtney was kind enough to research and print out all these wonderful facts, and um, I've only gone over just a couple of them, so it'll be all news to me as well. We need to get your real reaction. Yeah, we want it to be organic. She mentioned <laughs> something to me that's in here that I already was like shook over, so I'm excited to dive into it. Yeah, I actually enjoyed researching all this because I didn't know literally any of it. <laughs> I mean, one or two things I might have known, but like the actual history of stuff and how it came to be... Very excited about this. Yes. And before we actually get into all of these facts and details, we were just going to mention today we are, cheers, we are drinking um, the, just a glass or bottle of. <laughs> <laughs> Would we have it any other way? <laughs> no, absolutely not. With a French rosé, still rosé this time. We've done sparkling rosé in the past. So this way we will not be burping throughout the episode, hopefully. Or we might. Can't really we promise anything. We had to go anything. full Colorado on this. Yes. And put it in a Yeti cup. Another sponsorship opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to keep doing this until, until somebody wants to be someone, with us. <laughs> someone will want to pick this up. Maybe one day. Yeah. Yeah. Is it even, you know, a drink until it's in a Yeti cup? Especially in Colorado? I don't think so, really. Yeah, like you can have it camping. You could have it in your car. <laughs> we don't recommend drinking and driving. <laughs> Let's say that. But yes, if you're maybe like tailgating. You could go get your nails done. Oh, we we'll bring it with you, because they and have put them with it the in lid. A big yeti. Yeah, these yeah. have lids. Yeah, I don't yeah. know where they are, but you know they do. At your own risk. Yeah, <laughs> That's... I actually just learned that. I say that because my sister-in-law mm. love her to death, but she sent me a picture of her the other day uh, on her way to go get her nails done, and she had a to-go yeti cup with wine in it, and or with a white claw, I think. And I was like, why have I never thought of this before? Well, because there are some nail places. I wouldn't really know. I never do my nails. But they do offer booze. I know COVID kind of like... I went to one like a few weeks ago. It was way overpriced. And it was just like... Oh, you need to go and get your nails done when it's free. And they include it. That's that's what I'm saying. I've done pedicures where they've offered a glass of champagne or something. There we go. Yeah. You just pay the extra five, ten dollars and it just basically includes the alcohol. A bottle. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if it includes a bottle, that's high thinking right there. Yes. <laughs> the high standards, but That's yeah. where I'm at in life. Mm, don't My blame high you. standards, yeah. I don't blame me one bit. All right, so we'll we'll dive in. I think the first thing we were going to talk about are the, the histories of weddings and just kind of the random things like wedding cakes, bouquets, rings, all that kind of fun stuff. So How we'll they just... came to be, where they came from, mm-hmm. like essentially what makes up a wedding. And we'll just dive. These moments. Dive right on in. Why don't you go ahead first? Yes. Let's kick it off with the wedding bouquet. I feel like if you're watching on YouTube, like we need like a scroll by word that's like the bridal bouquet. Yeah. Bridal bouquet. Right here next Phase to one. the snake. Yeah. Right behind <laughs> oh, us. Yeah. Yes, yes. She's hiding. <laughs> we like to mix up our view. We want to be safe while we're doing stuff. So she's our guard. Yes. We have a cat in the corner. There are snake behind us. We got the dog locked away. Poor <laughs> the Maya. Room. Poor Maya. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Tangent. Number one. Why do brides carry flowers? What's your thought? Um, Because they smell good. That is actually it, yes. Oh, I got it. Yeah. See? Look oh, at you. Look it's actually go. one of the reasons. So let's see. I'll just read this to you. So long ago, the ancient Greeks and Romans used herbs and spices to ward off nasty, evil spirits or bad luck. So they would wear garlands, flowers, mm-hmm. headbands, all of that. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, exactly. Um, to cover up their masked body odor since bathing was few and far between back then. Yes. I don't know where people would, I mean, deodorant these days, I don't know where I would be without. I so. know. Seriously. Mm. Shampoo, all the things. Oh, dry shampoo especially. Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until the Victorian age that we saw the birth of the bridal bouquets that we have today. So instead of just using them to help mask your smell, now brides lean towards things that are actually colorful, that they like, that match their day, versus just like a, a symbolic thing i mean it's a good combination yeah i feel like you know right? you want them to smell good and look pretty so why not that's my excuse to if i ever want to have flowers in, in the apartment and then byron yells at me because then you know he's like what's the point they just die the next day and i'm like well 
I guess, but at least they look pretty and yeah. they smell good for now. And also, maybe I don't want to bathe this week, so you I'm trying to hide that. <laughs> He's very much used to that already, so if anything, it would just help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we have the wedding cake, which, yum. yum. I mean, nowadays we know it's not just wedding cakes, but yeah. going back to the core of it, the wedding cake. Um, in ancient Rome, where grooms would traditionally break a barley cake over the bride's head excuse yeah. me yeah <laughs> perhaps a precursor to cake smashing to bring good luck to the couple yep yep hold on time out so this guy would the grooms would break cake over the head yeah it's like so back then it wasn't necessarily like a, a bakery cake it was more just bread like a bread loaf oh right okay so he's just breaking bread over her head <laughs> Crumbs. This is the new version of Breaking Bread. <laughs> Crumbs everywhere. Down the dress. Yeah. In oh. your hair. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's ancient Rome. And yep. then what about medieval England? Medieval England would be the next evolution of wedding cakes, where couples would kiss over a large stack of sweet breads. If the kiss occurred without knocking over the big stack of cakes, then that meant the couple was said to have a happy and prosperous life. Basically, a great balance, apparently. <laughs> what happens if they actually did knock them over? Um, that I cannot be certain of. <laughs> Let me see. Is this in our details? So the cakes themselves didn't sound too appetizing by modern standards and were made with ingredients like lamb, testicles, po- oysters, <laughs> minced meats, and mutton. A far cry from today's sugary sweet standard white wedding cake. <laughs> Guests would take home pieces of these wedding cakes and tuck them under their pillows for luck. Could you imagine? I'm going to go ahead and go to the store and get you some testicles for good luck. Just throw some of those testicles under your pillow and the oysters right under my pillow because that's exactly what I need. Yeah. Oh, dear God. My God, have times have changed. I'm so happy that we're not back in medieval England because that's disgusting. Also, yeah, these people didn't shower very often back then. So or bathe. Everything was real savory back then. That's my reaction yeah. to that. Just but then came mm-mm. the introduction of you know sugars, refined sweets, as time goes on, and as things began to sweeten up in the 16th century, it was then that the traditional white cake with icing was born. Really refined sh- grains of sugar with you know white coloring also came at a pretty hefty price. So white cakes came to represent, you know, wealth. It was a sign mm. at your wedding that to your guests that you guys had money and you were kind of a higher status. So that's where the traditional white wedding cake evolved to. The testicles were out the door. Tossed out back <laughs> for the dogs, probably. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's I'm or again, shook. I'm just shook over this. Yeah. I'm very glad that that is no longer a thing. Although I do love oysters, don't get me wrong. But not in my I had cake. a good oyster yesterday, but not in my cake. I wouldn't even know With how to bread even just start in general. that process. Like, do you get cocktail sauce? I know. Do you just put it on top and then overcook it? Like, is it mashed? Is it because just... oysters used to be the poor man's food? Is like they would say. I think back in the day, oysters were actually weren't like now. They charge so much money yeah, for now oysters. That's like the rich man's food. It is like you normally order oysters. It's like two dollars an oyster or four dollars an oyster, and you can spend a lot of money on just oysters. Back in the day, I'm sure it was like nothing. Maybe because you could just go right into the water and be like, oh, I'm gonna have these oysters. I'm gonna take a barnacle and just right open there. Yeah, but I'm not an oyster fan. Mm- Oh, no? No. Oh. Which, I mean, is great for Will because when we go out to eat, yeah. he orders a dozen oysters. He gets them all to himself. Yeah, no, same, because Byron likes them. He just can't eat them. It, it upsets his stomach. Oh, so poor Tim Tim. Good for me. Yeah. Bad for him. Bad. Good for me, <laughs> bad for you, boo Yay. Hoo. Oh, well. More <laughs> for me. So the next on the list is the history of the wedding ceremony kiss. I guess, you know, Roman sealed contractual agreements with a kiss. Once upon a time, it was presumed that the couple did not kiss until after getting married, so they sealed the marriage deal with a kiss. Imagine like waiting a, that long. Yeah, I know, right? Literally, mm. like, well, yeah, I don't even know. That's a lot to handle. <laughs> like, why? Well, we don't even need to sign this uh, wedding marriage license. We'll just kiss. Yeah, no. That's no. our agreement. That's the legal binding agreement is kissing. Another fun trivia is... From the Middle Ages, many people were illiterate and signed contractual agreements with an X and then kissed it. So now we have sealed with a kiss 
And when you sign cards, XOXO, that's, that's where the X came from. Wow. Oh, that's great. And yeah. then, when, and, but they actually would they kiss. They actually uh, would kiss the paper, apparently. I don't think I've ever seen a couple kiss their marriage <laughs> license. Okay, guys, we're going to start implementing this. <laughs> I mean, if dogs can do paw prints yeah. on there, then why not have a couple being able to, to kiss? I don't know. Their piece of paper? I mean, if it's a guy and he's comfortable with wearing lipstick, then that's, you know. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, I'm into, I'm into it. it too. You do like a nice little nude color. It doesn't have to be a bright red. <laughs> Maybe just a low gloss. Just to keep it low key. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have wedding rings. It was the Egyptian pharaohs who first used rings to represent eternity. That's because a circle has no beginning and no end and reflects the shape of the sun and moon, which the Egyptians worshipped. The Egyptians also thought that the open space in the middle of a ring represented a gateway to the unknown. The Greeks adopted the tradition of giving rings to their lovers to represent devotion. The tradition of exchanging rings we see today dates back 3,000 years. While the first ever diamond ring was recorded in the will of a widow who passed in 1417. Oh, interesting. I know, right? I had no idea. I, when I was researching this, I did deep dive pictures of like original wedding rings. They were hideous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, just pieces of metal. Um, there were some made out of grass. Oh, those way, probably did not way, last very way long. back when. Yeah, and those ones were almost wound around each finger instead of just one. I mean, because you you know you get grass, and normally it's a lot bigger than just <laughs> the one finger wrap around. It'd be wrapped around a lot of times. Yeah. I also read that. I think it was mid like the European centuries when those started coming out. You would present your bride to be with a thimble, which I, feel like I've heard of that I know, before. but I didn't know why. Okay, so it kind of represented um, that it was her duty to start the family and kind of provide tapestries and clothing and all of that for mm-hmm. her family. Once she used that thimble to make her first set of whatever she was sewing, then you would cut the thimble and turn it into a ring. Oh, God, I'd be so useless back then. Oh, I would be too. like, my my husband at the time would be like, you're out. You're not making anything. He's like, you made me a napkin. Uh, no, I'd be like, bitch, I made you some oysters. Yeah. And I didn't even make them. <laughs> I just chucked them on them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're actually just for me because you can't even eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this sewing you talk of? <laughs> yeah, I, no, no. So then when did, or I should say, so where did men start wearing rings? I guess up until the past century, wedding rings were mostly worn by women, although the Christian church promoted exchanging rings as a way of keeping men faithful. Dual rings only caught on during World War II when American and European soldiers wore wedding rings as a way to remember their wives and sweethearts back home. The tradition continued through the Korean War. After this, wedding rings for men caught on among civilians as well. Oh, because of the war. It doesn't make sense, though. Just like a little symbol... I mean, in general, yeah, something think to look of. down at, right? And you still, you look down at your wedding rings and kind of, you know, reminds you of your person. Yeah, I do love it when people have like an engraved message or yeah, a date. saying or date or just something yeah, super just to them, you know, something important to them. That's really cute. So, yeah, yeah people That's, are, you know, I would like to see that first diamond in fourteen in fourteen seventeen. It's probably not very big. No, and not very like it probably wasn't that great. I think I did read that it said that they based it off of like the I don't want to say the dirtier. I guess the less clarity was thought to be better back then. Interesting. Yeah. Well, do you, why is that? I have no idea. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. And let you know. Dirty oh, yeah. ass diamond rings. <laughs> Google dirty diamond rings. <laughs> you'll probably get something horrible. Don't do that. Don't, Don't Google those. Just as long as you have a glass of wine, you'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> I also added on our list eloping. Yeah. I felt like it was necessary with our industry and post-COVID times. Can you even say post-COVID? I don't know. But post-COVID times, I feel like eloping obviously has become a much larger thing. More people are doing it. But where did it come from? How did it start? Apparently, centuries ago, England restricted marriage to couples who were 21 and over. But that didn't stop young lovers from finding a loophole. In this case, a nearby Scottish town without such limitations. Today, that village, oh God, Gretna Green. Nailed it. 
is still popular for couples who want to elope. Wow. Isn't that cute? Let's go to Scotland and get some people eloped. So you let yes. us know. If anyone wants to elope at Gretna Green, we're here. I'm always down for, yeah. Oh, yes. Like the original location for eloping. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. I'm I feel gonna... like we just discovered this. <laughs> Nobody but I mean, this. technically not. Nobody just steal this idea. This is ours. <laughs> anyone wants to go to Gretna Green, you yeah, let us for know. Us. Um, also, 21 and over. Yeah. What am I, getting married at 13? Yeah, I guess. So if I didn't make the cutoff of 20 years of age, I can't get married. Or 21. Yeah, but like, right, you're turning 20. Well, right. Then yeah. I have a year. I mean, you nowadays you can drive when you're 16. That's probably so apparently when, you couldn't yeah. even get married. Which is kind of interesting because then... I've heard of so many histories of people getting married so young. Yeah. Older men marrying, like, children. Sickos. Right. Uh, When it was, like, normal, quote-unquote, back in the day. But But I guess back in the day you died at, like, 28. True, I guess, yeah. Your life was over. (laughs) Get married and then you die. That's it. Had your kids and you died. Plop them out and then sew some underwear and you're good to go. Sew some some (laughs) underwear with a thimble. The thimble while you're eating some oysters. (laughs) Just imagine if Alicia and I created weddings. That is what you would see. <laughs> That's what I would have. I, I should have my oysters, thimbles. My vow and renewal death. should include sewn <laughs> underwear, bunch of oysters, <laughs> um, some breaking bread. But I would break it over Byron's head, not yeah. mine, because yeah, I will slap a bitch if someone tries to break anything over my head. No, absolutely not. <laughs> don't break anything over Alicia's head. No, no, Underwind. don't do it. I've got my limitations. That's beyond what my <laughs> what I can handle. Just can't. Yeah. No. Cake smash. Nothing. No. Although I will say, side note, my very first birthday I spent with Byron, which is we were only dating for two weeks at the time. He did smash a cake into my face. Um, is that when you fell in love with him? Yeah, it's had the moment I knew. Yeah. He just smashed it right in there. Smashed a good cake. A bit, I know I was kind of upset because my roommate at the time <laughs> specifically had a, a penis drawn on it because I'm obsessed with drawing dicks, as, as we would know. Yeah. And at the time, my roommate made sure to request from the restaurant for them to draw a penis on the cake. And I just remember taking a photo with it, sat it back down, and then Byron took my, my head and just slammed it right into the cake. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, I love he just wanted you to have good contact. I don't know, something. He just really wanted me to get up all in that. So that I did. That is hilarious. <laughs> so that, <laughs> that set the standard. That set the bar. But that's me putting my face into a cake, not breaking it over my head. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll take that. Note. Note to self. Just so many notes to take. All right. So now we are going to move on to traditions, wedding traditions, you know, bouquet toss, garter toss, all the good stuff, the honeymoon, which is well, we'll get to that. The classic. We'll get to the that. The classic wedding tradition that might not be what you think. Oh, no. I no. can't wait to get to that one. I, exactly. So why don't we start? We'll do the bouquet toss. Yes. So the bouquet toss originated in ancient England, as I'm catching on that everything did. Oh, I mean, most... Uh, everything started over there. Right. Um, guests in attendance of a wedding would try and rip off pieces of the bride's dress or a bridal bouquet as they were thought to bestow good luck and fortune to those who got a piece. Due to this, sometimes natural brutal nature, excuse me, of this mob mentality, brides began the tradition of tossing their bouquets in one direction and they would take off running. (laughs) And then the guests would run in the other direction to get the bouquet, leaving the bride, you know, free and clear to get away, leaving the bride in peace, if you will. Um, as time has gone on, this tradition has morphed into the careful, or sorry, carefree bouquet toss that we now celebrate. Today, the bouquet is still thought to represent good luck and fortune to the idea of passing this tradition on to the next bride or unwed women. Yes. So that's where we get all our single ladies. I know there's nothing worse than being called out on the dance floor for being a single lady, and you now have to go catch this bouquet. But now you know where the tradition came from, so you can feel a little bit better. It is still a little bit mob mentality. It is. They still kind of go stir crazy over the fact that, like, they are adamant about catching this bouquet. Although, can you even imagine people, like, ripping your dress? dress? Uh, That would be so scary. Scary. Like, what? I would imagine that these dresses got ripped in half or something. (laughs) Yeah, get it, like, altered and then save the pieces to give to people. Yeah, you don't need to just tear off 
pieces of my dress that I'm my just mom like, probably made me. Exactly, especially back in the day. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm like trying to picture being at a wedding where guests are literally tearing at the bride's dress. And she's just like, it's fine. It's good luck. It's fine. It's fine. She shows up to like walk down the aisle and is literally half of the <laughs> dress left. <laughs> Hopefully this would happen after the ceremony. Bless it. It needs to definitely be after. I did not find anything about that in my research. <laughs> But I will say, you girls are still wild and rowdy when that bouquet goes. I mean, it's entertaining. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Whenever I've this happens. i some elbows go. <laughs> no, the best, though, it's kind of like, you know, when the bride walks down the aisle and the groom's looking at the bride. And you focus a lot of times on the groom as he's looking at her um, or whatever, you know, whoever's coming down who's looking and <laughs> look at him. And then so when a bouquet toss happens it's always like trying to figure out who is the significant other to the person who caught yeah. the bouquet because i have seen who quite a few videos to? quite a few videos where she catches it and looks over and the guy's just sitting there like stunned yeah. just or pissed Deer off headlights just not ready for this next level commitment yeah well it's good luck so you can't just throw away that luck no exactly so even if you catch it and you're like i don't really care about getting married it's still good luck and, you know, the bride's doing it on purpose. So, and you know, wants gets to... gets her dress in one piece. Exactly. It keeps her safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keeps her dress safe. I approve. Um, I think we should put bouquet toss on the stand. Is this something you love or hate? Approve, not approve. Mm. I f- um, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit more towards n- n- no, like not having them. Um, but I feel that. Yeah, I mean, I think it can work really well for a certain crowd. Yeah. It, oh, I, that's perfect word for it. But yeah, it's for a certain crowd. It's for a certain crowd. Some if you're don't want to be dragged out there and yeah, if you know there's women out there who are just and you have a lot of single friends or something like that's cool. But then you have like three people out there and one of them's like a six year old. You're like, okay, well. <laughs> You're not going to catch this. Back in medieval times, maybe yeah. it worked back then. She was going to get married to, like, this 20-year-old dude. But, like, <laughs> now it's just kind of weird. So whenever I do see, like, a child catch a bouquet, I'm like, okay, well, like, this is... Good for you, sweetie. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the kind of instance where I'm like, yeah. ah. But if you do have, like, a lot of people, then I think it could yeah. be... I, I agree with that. Fun. But also separate bouquet. Yes. Don't throw your main bouquet. No. Don't spend hundreds of dollars on your bouquet just to, just toss, to toss it, it off. Air. Make sure you have your floors. Make a separate one. I've even, we had a wedding last year where they, bride went, tossed the bouquet. Her bouquet? Uh, I don't know. I think it was uh, just a bouquet, maybe one of the okay. bridesmaids. Yeah, yeah, Because that's also, yeah. It landed straight in the chandelier. Gone. Nobody got it. <laughs> How, are All they still of, married? They are still married. Okay, yes, for now. Very adorable, sweet little couple. Um, it was kind of fun because then the groomsmen got on each other's shoulders and lifted each other up there to get it, and it made for great photos. But huh. we did warn her ahead of time to stand to the side so that it wouldn't go in the bouquet. But then when she tossed it, in the chandelier, in the chandelier, chandelier yeah, yeah, still landed in there. Oh. So yeah. <laughs> opposite side of a bouquet toss we have the garter toss yeah toss in the garter is said to either have originated in ancient france or england the history of tossing the garter also is steeped in the pre- tradition if i could talk of dealing with the oh dear <laughs> <laughs> aforementioned i don't think i've ever heard that word but aforementioned rowdy wedding guests okay. after the wedding ceremony occurred guests would escort the bride and the groom to their chambers i love when i said to their chambers me too so romantic to, to steal the bride's stockings what is with it with back in the day just people, people were being, aggressive oh uh, really aggressive yes. stealing things ripping things off of people are you getting a theme here Ah, oh, I'm just really glad that this is like... Yeah, weddings have dialed past. down. Yes. So this was done either as proof of consummation or to throw the stockings at the heads of the bride and groom. <laughs> it was believed by guests that if they hit the bride or groom in the head with the bride's stockings, they would receive good luck and fertility. To prevent this, the groom began throwing the bride's stockings out the door before the guests could enter, ensuring a more peaceful experience for the newlyweds. Over time, this practice evolved into day's garter toss. Isn't that so... I think this one is so fascinating. I'm, like, trying to, like, intake all of yeah, this information. I'm picturing, you know, people back stockings then... Stockings being thrown in like in a big wooden faces. door, right? And then the groom whisks his bride away to their wedding chambers, and then... 
the guests coming to bang on the door to try and get her stockings and then the groom just being like all right fuck all of you here they are and like locking the door it's don't throw these at my head Uh, instead i'm gonna throw them at you i.e garter toss I'm like, I'm, st- again, I'm still soaking it all in. I'm yeah. like, it's just the like French these, or the English, man. I don't know what it's like it these is. simple things that we see at weddings today. And the, just the origination of these yes. things are so extreme compared to what they actually are today, yeah. which I do feel like the garter toss and like doing the garter and stuff is like, da- outside, between the garter toss and the bouquet toss, the garter toss is done way less than the bouquet toss yeah. these days, just because people maybe don't feel as comfortable. Well, we've all been to a wedding a time or two where the garter toss got a little more than we wanted to see. Mm-hmm. A little more raunchier than especially we were ready for, especially if, if it you're was drunk. later up in the reception and yeah. alcohol was consumed. At that point, it's just like the bride's out there with her legs wide open and her grandma staring at her and yeah. her leg up on a shoulder somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Do, I think the DJ doesn't help the situation with their song choices often. <laughs> yeah, they like encourage it. They do. I, I mean, it's fun to watch, but funny. at the same time, it takes if a you're at the wrong crowd. angle. Yeah. And it does, right. You know, know your audience. Yeah, know your audience. I feel like, well, and I have videoed a few of these. Where we're just looking away, <laughs> waiting for it to end. <laughs> you could always avoid it and just already have a garter and ready to go. It, yeah. And just toss it. You don't have to put the mouth on the inner thigh. You don't actually have to get it, yeah. And I've also seen some just put it on an ankle. Yeah. And they go down and get it. That's fine. Because it is sometimes like... A bride something blue or yeah, something borrowed. Well, maybe. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> See, the guy's putting his mouth on it. I'm... Speaking of. Oh, gosh, this is the next one. Yeah, the honeymoon. The honeymoon. Mm. Uh, now, before you read it, I'm going to cover yours up. Where do you think the honeymoon came from? I mean, because uh, I know we briefly discussed this, but because yeah. my assumption was just like today, you get married and you have the honeymoon to like celebrate together. And like, that's what that's what my initial thought was, is like celebrating together alone afterwards. Yeah, just a time alone, right? Yeah, same. A, like significant time alone to celebrate. So there's actually technically three things that the honeymoon came from. I'll let you start with the first one. Okay, so the idea of a honeymoon dates back as far as the 5th century in a number of European cultures when time was measured in moon cycles. At their wedding, couples were presented with a quote-unquote moon or roughly one month's worth of mead, which was an alcoholic honey wine to drink together, which, I mean, mead is... I, I, they still make mead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mead was believed to be an... Oh, you give me these ones. An aphrodisiac. Yes, that's what it is. Ooh la la. Yeah. I actually don't think I've ever seen the word just typed Written out. out. It yeah. is a lot longer than I thought it would be. Aphrodisiac. I will tell you my spelling is not great, so <laughs> I can't guarantee that. No, it's just I'm not reading all that much. <laughs> Words are hard. Words are hard. <laughs> so, aphrod- so mead was believed to be an aphrodisiac, so couples were expected to binge on wine for 30 days to get drunk enough to establish sexual intimacy. <laughs> 30 days that's a big old headache right there yeah it was then hoped that the couple would conceive their first child during this time so many historians believe the term honeymoon was born from this concept it's a moon's worth of honey wine a lot to handle right I'll, there uh, so let's just digest that for a minute I'm literally, that's what I'm doing right now yeah, you're like jaw uh, on the ground as I take a sip of my wine I literally need a sip but of wine but if you Like, think about it. Back then, a lot of marriages were arranged. Mm -hmm. So you had to work your way up. You needed some mead. You need the mead to get the speed. To get the speed. (laughs) Hey, that's our first podcast (laughs) t-shirt. Get the mead for speed. I have a mead for speed. Wow, 30 days. That is excessive. After one day. Yeah, I mean, just like the afternoon that we spend doing this kind of thing, drinking wine, is like a lot yeah, for me. So, same. yeah. So the second half of where the honeymoon came from, while you digest that, is the basis of it is essentially a kidnapping. <laughs> yes, that is right. Kidnapping. You heard me correctly. According to some historians, the honeymoon is a relic of "quote unquote" marriage by capture. The groom would hide his kidnapped bride away for months at a time until their family stopped looking for them 
or they became pregnant, at which point it was considered too late for the marriage to be nullified. So basically, he trapped her. Basically, it's a Lifetime movie. Straight up trapped her. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure I've seen this Lifetime movie. I'm pretty sure this is a Lifetime movie, if not several Lifetime movies. Yes. I've seen many. Oh, this is good. This is good. It is believed that some poorer men did this to avoid having to pay the family's dowry in areas such as China, South America, East and South Asia, Africa, and some European gypsy communities. So he literally like, I will give you one cow to marry your daughter. And then he would whisk her away, kidnap her until she was pregnant, and then he wouldn't have to pay the dowry. And... This poor woman is now pregnant, and her family does not have a cow. I also like that I just created a random woman in history. Yes, that this one woman lifetime story because it's a lifetime movie. Yeah. Uh. All right, the final piece that creates the honeymoon. A family affair. While these days couples marry for love, historically most weddings weren't about romance. They were about class and inheritance. Think Pride and Prejudice before the happy ending. Because there was no need for the couple to be alone together, they would use the honeymoon experience to take a bridal tour to visit friends and family who couldn't make the wedding. Spending your honeymoon, visiting your in-laws at their place doesn't seem like the ideal post-wedding getaway, does it? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm. Love my in-laws. Yeah. But, but I wouldn't want to be going getting pregnant just, around them. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> just travel to your house like, oh, we're married now, here I come to your house. Yeah, no, that's... Give me my gifts. I guess it is better, though, than being kidnapped, so... (laughs) There's some safety in numbers. You could just, like, add these all together. You just get really drunk for 30 days, get kidnapped... And then visit your in-laws. And then visit your in-laws. Yeah. And you just have this whole plethora of honeymoon nonsense going on that's... (laughs) So there you have it. That's where the honeymoon came from. I'm like... You're drinking honey wine. Soaking it in. Over the moon. You've been kidnapped by your groom to go travel around and And see families. And And get get pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) While drunk. And now today's honeymoon is nothing like that. No, it's exactly what we were just saying before. I mean, we still drink. No, right. For many days around. But you're not inviting your in-laws. You're not inviting anyone. get pregnant. Some people do. That's just, you know, whatever, yeah. an inevitable, an inevitable Moment. thing yes. that happens yep, to yep. some people uh, who, you know, whatever. But, but yeah, no, that's, that's intense. I, I think the kidnapping <laughs> thing is what really threw me off. I could not believe that was like... <laughs> oh, I had way too much fun with all this. <laughs> I know. I'm sure as you were looking this up, you're like, I don't know if this is real. Yeah. This can't be real. This is real. <laughs> we, so on our weddings unedited website we will link the articles that i found all of this information on so if you guys want to read more about things and deep dive you can um this is just essentially the cliff notes version yeah but if you want to deep dive it's pretty fascinating there's so much more you know because it goes through the start of something and then how it it evolved so true we'll link that all for you guys so much wonderful information yeah thank you (laughs) so now we have the Uh, tradition of bachelor parties so very much the same as what we see today which is surprising that this is a tradition that hasn't really evolved much the bachelor party dates back as early as the fifth century bc wow i know wow that's her back i know that's like just men like originally really they like to hulk out yeah just show off man stuff man stuff I like to be a man. Yeah. Pound man. on their chests. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's a bird. I didn't even know. That is a bird, not a man. Uh, he's, yeah, I don't know. Um, so the ancient Spartans celebrated the grooms last night as a single man in which they held a dinner and made toast on his behalf. Well, that's nice. He was still polite. Yeah. There might have been some killing after that. Yeah, but there were Spartans. There was much more than that going on. Yeah. I didn't put bachelorette parties on here. Just Bachelor, because it was like women just being like, we want a day too. Is that what it was? Yeah. They were just like jealous that yeah. the guys were getting together? Basically. Oh. So I was like, all right. I feel like... The man one made more sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably biased, but like bachelorette parties seem to be a little bit more fun than bachelor parties. I then agree. again, I don't know. I feel like more mistakes are made on bachelor parties. <laughs> yeah. Whether that's drinking too much, infidelity. Or going to a strip club and having way too much be. fun there. Yeah. 
Um, putting it on stand. Do you like them? Love them? Hate them? I mean, I've never been to a bachelor party, so I can't say personally. But bachelorette parties, yeah. Yeah, no, I generally, yeah. Bachelor parties, I think, are fun. I've, the last one I went to was in Vegas. Take them. A lot of women. Although I will say the one thing that I don't like about them is if they're like, super super maybe just probably because it's my personality so i'm gonna say that but personally i'm not really one who likes to go to a bachelorette party where it's like super planned out from like minute one to you know the last minute of the trip like i think a lot of women yeah we're doing men whoever's invited to these things like to go and enjoy themselves it's a vacation yeah on top of celebrating the bright to be um so when you do have all these things planned out and they're just kind of like at the end of the day you're exhausted from doing all these things and it's like almost kind of like a job yeah um <laughs> like a job you're showing up to do work yeah. and i have to be somewhere at a time yeah i mean the last bachelorette party i went to in vegas there was just so much planned out which i'm sure the bride loves my friend is like type a loves all that kind of stuff but at the same time you also have to think about everyone else and i just i wanted to sleep like half the time because yeah. i'm not i'm recovering 21. yeah i yeah. especially if you are yeah exactly if you are drinking into the night and then the next morning you have a 9 a.m breakfast oh hell no yeah. i'm not gonna show going up to that on a rafting tour and then tonight we have dinner reservations at seven and then we're going clubbing after that. Like, and I'm talking about things we're even planned out in between mm-mm. like yeah exactly so it was like I'm a locking caveat. myself in the room love it but to a certain extent, so don't love overdo it, but it. Less it. Yeah, like try to make it really about the just enjoying yourselves in general instead of yeah. it having to shove in all of these things that you have. You feel like you have to do, which you don't. You don't have to do anything. There's no, no rules to it. I think the number one thing is just making sure everyone has a good time and they get along because we all know not all women get along either. So oh, show inviting just the people who are not troublemakers, generally speaking. How do we feel about? conjoined like co-ed bachelor and bachelorette i think that those are they could be fun yeah i agree i I, think i would like to see more of those Mm -hmm. i feel like they're not done that often which i understand you want to have time with your friends and your friends but you guys could break off exactly i think so will and i didn't do bachelor and bachelorette parties we just kind of ran out of time and it was like really low on my list i really didn't care um but if going back i would for sure we did talk about doing like a conjoined Maybe as lame as it sounds, like a camping trip, but like an epic glamping one. That doesn't sound lame. And just like, let's go to the woods and see what happens, team. See who comes back alive. Okay, well, when you put it that way, that doesn't sound lame. That just sounds dangerous. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to skin some squirrels. You can count me out on that one. Yeah. (laughs) No, but I do think that conjoined celebrations for bachelor, bachelorette parties. It's just one of those things like, no, I don't want to be with the men and I don't want to yeah. be with the women. I think this just get over yourselves. Only. Yeah. Get over yourselves. Have a good time. And then like you yes. said, they can split off and they don't have to stay together the whole time. They can have like a night or a day where they go and do their own thing yeah, and they like come back together. The girls together. are going to the spa or laying out of the pool and the boys are going golfing or yeah. like their girls are going to dinner here and the boys are going to dinner there and we'll meet up for drinks after. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. More of that. A more of that, please. Poor favor. That so, leads us to the bridal, the bridal shower. Yeah, I did have a bridal shower. You were there. I was there. I'm like, I'm like thinking back to the photo that we took. Yeah. It was like actual evidence. We should this. post that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like one of see. our first photos. Yeah, you talk. You say yes. What these were? So the bridal shower traces back to the 16th century in Holland, where the bridal shower was initiated as an alternative to the dowry system. Friends and families gave small favors to the bride to help her begin her married life, whether she was too poor to afford the, a dowry or the father was opposed to the match. So essentially, they were trying to pay the father off. <laughs> 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 Leave it to me to take it there. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, because there is the thing with weddings and, you know, the father's giving their daughters away. And yeah. so it's a you, lot for him. Yeah, it's a lot for for them to mentally He take needs in. some gifts in return. Yeah, he's like, I'm not okay with my daughter's life, so just give me all the gifts. I don't like this man, so give me gifts. Yeah, apparently. I guess maybe it worked. Yeah. That's why they would do them. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so next up are bridal veils. Oh, where did that one go? I was like, I, I'm all, all torn around you in my papers here. You can go ahead and talk here. about the bridal I found veils. It. Yeah, yeah. found the research. So, by having a veil over the bride's face, the groom wouldn't see her until the very last moment. At the end of the ceremony, when they're meant to kiss, he would be able to remove the veil, and it would be too late to back out at that point. So, this is coming from, you know, 
arranged marriages perspective, the superstition about a bride and groom seeing each other before the ceremony has now evolved into a much more romantic idea that the couple shouldn't see each other before the ceremony. Um, you know, don't want to see them at the altar or in a dress or anything like that because it's bad luck, quote unquote, but it actually comes from arranged marriages. Mm. I mean, I get, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. When you think about that. It does, 100%. Which now it's funny because veils a lot of times don't even cover the bride's face. Yeah, you, it, I can't think of a wedding that I've seen in maybe ever where the veil actually was put over the bride's face as she walked down. I think I've only had maybe one or two. Yeah, it's, well, if you do go to a wedding and see that, or if we get to capture a wedding and see that, now you know it's because of arranged marriages. They were trying to hide her gorgeous and or, or hideous <laughs> boily face. <laughs> oh, the ooh. second half of the veil tradition is also said to make you less susceptible to curses and hexes of jealous witches and evil spirits <laughs> who wanted to steal your happiness on your special day. Because apparently they were just witches. Yeah, there were back then. Um, <laughs> once her face was obscured, so too were her vexes. So those tiny little veils were meant to protect you from witchery. From those witches out there. Debacle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, someone just... I love veils. You know, they could just... Exactly. I love veils, too. I think... They just elevate everything, and if it protects add... you from a, a hex, <laughs> even better. Keep your happiness on your wedding day. And then Wear a veil. long one, you can, like... Like a cape, you can, like, wisp it around. Yeah. Just, like... I don't know. Flip not away to that hex. My microphone. <laughs> yeah. Hex be gone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, you're totally fine. I just am missing a page. So we are borrowing. So the next thing is tossing rice, which is a symbol of health and prosperity, in which we were saying that nowadays is not even really a thing. I don't think I've seen rice being tossed at a wedding and ever. ever. No. It's poor birds. I know. Appar- yeah, apparently it kills birds. Um, I think we've progressed to lavender mm-hmm. bubbles yeah just like we were talking about simpler last things yeah just more environmental things sustainable yeah <laughs> not this again not this again <laughs> i remembered this time um and then i'll read this next one yeah last all right so bridesmaids and groomsmen where did they come from how did they come to be and we're about to find out yeah tell me so ancient romans were quite superstitious Ten maids and ten men stood by the bride and groom to protect them from evil spirits. There was apparently a lot of evil spirits back then. Witches. Yeah, remember? Spirits. Like the Egyptians loved cats. True. Because of all that. Yeah, they thought like cats were like freaking holy. Yeah, I mean, Barry's just well, on his holy. own pedestal. Look at that angel. <laughs> Don't know where his face is, but look at him. Yeah, you can't even see him. He's just all black. Just blends right into each other. It's racist. So, <clears throat> bridesmaids and groomsmen dressed identically to the bride and groom. Oh, identically. That's hmm. where you get the matching dresses. Well, do they match like to the bride and groom, like in a sense of like the bride and the bridesmaids would all wear the same color? I think they matched in the sense that they would all wear white and they yeah. also all wore veils. Interesting. All wore veils. Yes, oh, okay. Keep reading. I need to keep reading apparently. So, um, so respectively, to confuse these malicious forces. I had to say malicious forces. <laughs> the thinking went that if all the women and all the men were dressed the same, then the vile demons would <laughs> would not be able to target the bride and groom specifically. Because they didn't know who they were. Wow. Well, protecting the duo and mainly the bride was the primary mission of bridesmaids and groomsmen in ancient Rome. Huh. In, in fact, groomsmen would accompany the bride, not the groom, to the celebration in order to protect the woman from thieves who might steal her dowry. And why ten bridesmaids and ten groomsmen? Why? Because ancient Roman law required that 10 witnesses be present for every wedding. The responsibilities of groomsmen are much less serious these days. No longer are they literally protecting the life <laughs> and wealth of the bride. Now groomsmen are entitled or enlisted to plan the bachelor party, usher wedding guests to their seats at the ceremony, and to escort bridesmaids down the aisle. They've literally downgraded. What, their responsibilities are just yeah. axed. They no longer have to keep anyone alive. They never have to, like, Fight ward off. off the spirits. Yeah. But fascinating. That's where you get the matching dresses. And then I read that over time. 
the dresses got either shorter or the color started to change. They started getting shorter veils while, you know, the bride might still have a long veil. And then that's led to the evolution of now. No veils for bridesmaids. No veils for bridesmaids, but we still have the matching dresses. Mm -hmm. And then in the last few years, we've seen the mixed match dresses. But that is the evolution of where that came from. And 10 witnesses. And 10, yeah. Five and five. Wow. (laughs) Colorado's like, nah, we don't need any of that. Nah, we don't want none of that, bro. No, you don't even need an officiate. No witnesses, nothing. No one even needs to know you got married. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Wow. That's very interesting. Yeah. The responsibilities have gone way down. Not that yeah. they don't have responsibilities, but. I kind of like the idea of the groomsmen, like, being there, protecting the bride and, like, ushering From her thieves. to the groom, you know, on the wedding day. I think that would be kind of fun. Were they the ones, like, very, like, <laughs> I'm, like, combining the things, like, with people who are trying to, like, tear <laughs> the wedding dress. Were they protecting <laughs> against those people? Those I would assume trolls not. trolls trying to pull at the dress. That's and, like, when they had drank too much and they were off duty. Off drinking the mead and... Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yep. Um, I think this might be the last thing in traditions. Yes. The last tradition we are bringing to you guys is including a sixpence in your shoe. A sixpence. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which I did also read that they no longer, I don't know if this is true or not, make an actual sixpence anymore. People do pennies now. They do pennies. Yep. 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 Um, so what most people don't know is that this is one of the oldest and most iconic wedding proverbs known to date. Dating back to the Victorian times, a father would place a sixpence, or i.e. now a penny, in his daughter's shoe as a token of good luck and prosperity. Nowadays, a penny is sub- subbed, excuse me, just said that, subbed instead of a sixpence for any family member or friend so somebody that wants to like hold this penny, put good wishes on it, and then put it in the shoe. Um, and if you don't want to squeeze a coin into your stiletto, consider tying it to your bouquet, a ring bearer's pillow, or onto your little shoe strap I've seen. Oh, yeah. So you don't actually have to stand on a penny all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Especially who knows where it's been. Yeah. And, you know, I have one leg that's longer than the other. <laughs> So then that would just throw off my balance all day. Well, if you put it it's on like the one a that's shorter. your shoe all day. If you put it on one that's shorter underneath, it might, I, I mean. I could be taller. I could be right. You could be a penny's worth taller. Yeah. <laughs> just by the. The second t-shirt we're going to make. A penny's worth taller. <laughs> yeah. I have used to say, I think I've only had one bride have the penny. I've only had like one or two. I think she even like, it fell in between. Like, yeah. It felt like. <laughs> that can't be good. No, it fell like in the balcony area like off the balcony at one point like even before the ceremony and she's like well oh no it was after i think yeah this was a friend after the ceremony yeah last so friend slash bride. Was at least i blessed. remember this now it was on the balcony at the venue but i think it was after the ceremony and it fell through oh no on the patio. that is unfortunate off yeah out of her louis batons <laughs> well, at least they were louis mm. um i've only seen it tied to the little strappies on the stilettos and like a bridesmaid or somebody tying it so it was like a cute moment yeah when you do have like you need to make it like a whole thing and but i didn't know what any of it meant i know when that penny fell through i was like well now you're one cent yeah you're one cent poorer poorer, so (laughs) are you gonna be okay do you need help blink twice if you need a check where are you gonna use that to help pay for your honeymoon where you're gonna get kidnapped and impregnated (laughs) Alicia is not okay about the honeymoon. I'm sh- shook. She told me that was like the one thing I knew about before we got onto this, and uh, shooketh, shooketh. Like someone you got married to literally kidnaps you. Yeah. I mean, again, lifetime movie. Just situation. met him. Don't even know you. Barely just just revealed just, myself from the veil. Exactly. My brain just went to the same spot. This yeah. is why. Well, then this We're is why together. this is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Love you so much. All right, the last thing we are going to bring you guys is wedding traditions from around the world. Obviously, they are different. Anywhere you go in the world, they might not do bouquet tosses, or that might seem... I did read in a... I think it was literally an Instagram reel the other day. Somebody had posted, and they commented from the UK, and they said that even today, it is not common at all to do first looks in the UK, and that it is very common for weddings to start at like 10 or 11 and then the ceremony will be at noon and then photos at one or two and then dinner starts 
you know, three or four, and then everyone's done by seven or eight, and, like, that just blew my mind. They're just, like, all ready for bed at 7 p.m. Yeah, but their dinners are so elaborate over there, so they need time, right? Oh, yeah. No, their dinners are probably, like, three hours long. Yeah, no, they are, and you have, like, a different type of alcohol for every single course that you have. Can't say I'm against that. No, no. (laughs) All right, the first one is one that I have actually seen at a wedding, and it is the log sawing. And this is a German and or Belgian, I think, tradition. So after you get married, the couples are presented with a large log and a saw, and you guys saw it together. So by sawing this log in half as a team, it is believed they are proving that their ability to work together and overcoming tough obstacles. So you said you've seen this before? Yes. They've sawed the log? Uh Uh-huh. It is so cool. I'll have to post a photo of it, but they literally had a log set up on... I think it's called a horse, right? A horse saw? You're literally asking the wrong person right here. Either way, there was a log set up, and they had a big giant (laughs) saw, and they just went back and forth, sawing it until the log broke. And then that was their first task as a married couple, and they overcame it. And they did it instead of cake cutting. And I really loved that idea. And that's very Colorado, again. Totally. Very Colorado. Mountain wedding. So here for that. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. So... Norway brides wear crowns to deflect evil spirits. Here we go again. Although I'm spirits, all about crowns. Crowns are coming back. They are making every few years. I feel like they circle back. Yeah, and they're different. Like sometime, I think like a few years ago, they were decorated with a lot of like shiny. And bedazzling bedazzled yeah i always think of the jazzled when i hear the jj jazzling yes. so not the jazzled bedazzled crowns <laughs> i mean you could bedazzle yourself just no one would know until you get kidnapped later so yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh please no <laughs> never did i think our podcast would talk about the jazzling i'm I didn't say that it wasn't going to happen. Is you that know? a thing still? All right, tangent. <laughs> In Mexico, the wedding lasso is their tradition. So this is made of rosary beads, flowers, and it gets draped over the couple in a figure eight. And that is supposed to signify unity and the infinity mm-hmm. of their marriage. Cute. I know. I Mexico. feel like that you see that in other, maybe like Indian weddings, they do kind of like a same thing. Mm-hmm. They drape the couple together. Yeah. No, I like that. So Armenia, bread balance. Oh, <laughs> Back to the bread. <laughs> Back to the bread. We're not putting it over the head. We are balancing the lavish flatbread on your shoulders to keep evil spirits away. Flatbread on your shoulders. How does that work? I don't know. I'm In my mind, I'm picturing, this is so terrible. I'm so sorry ahead of time. But I'm picturing tortillas <laughs> just sitting on shoulders, right? And you're just like trying to keep them there. I don't know. Do people stack them? Are you trying to get multiples? I have a lot of questions that I could not find in my research. So if anyone knows, let us know, please. Yeah. I would just be really afraid of like truffle oil dripping down onto <laughs> my dress because I love myself a good truffle oil mm. flatbread with like blue cheese. All right, and... you're making me hungry. In the Congo, there is no smiling on your wedding day. What? I know. In Con- Congo? Congo. I don't know when this is, if it's still a thing. This list i found i will link it you guys can read more in detail but (laughs) in the congo no smiling on your wedding day because the two are not allowed to smile if they do it would mean that you are not taking your marriage seriously so they want you to like be serious stoic stone cold face on your wedding day because this marriage is going to last don't enjoy yourselves have zero fun (laughs) zero fun bunch never uh, the checks placing a baby on the bed before a check bride and groom tie the knot. An infant is placed on the couple's bed to bless and enhance their fertility. Once they've wed, guests shower them with rice, peas, and lentils. <laughs> oh, so shit, to, I got a pea in my eye. To promote fertility. <laughs> Since when are peas a symbol of fertility? A fertility? I don't know. It's not a very sexy vegetable. I'm not, even, I'm not a fan of peas in the first place. Question mark? Just is a pea a vegetable? That's a good question. Or is it a, a bean? I oh. think it's a bean, which yeah. essentially is a vegetable. Oh, oh my we're God. Just, yeah. We've drank too know. much. <laughs> it's all downhill. <laughs> but also, like, can you imagine being excited? Like, hey, I'm going to get married. Pause. 
I gotta put a baby on your bed. <laughs> and throw some peas. And throw some lentils so in your eyes. Are they frozen? Are They're they fresh? Frozen peas only. Yeah. In the bag. Hi. <laughs> Just throw a Thinking bag of frozen peas. And yeah. she's just pouring them on her ta- back yeah, tattoo. Yep. Exactly. That's where we're at. <laughs> in Cuba, they do the money dance, which we still see today, which I did not know was a Cuban thing. I don't know. Because I have seen Greeks. Yeah. Do maybe it's just like in general. But to promote uh, wealth for the couple, encourage or exactly. promote good luck. In Cuba, it is a custom that every man who dances with the bride must pin money to her dress to help the couple pay for their wedding and their kidnapping honeymoon. <laughs> and then use a pin. Yeah. Putting holes in the dress. Stab her. Yeah. Oh, right. If you're like going to put a stains. hole in my dress, that better be at least $100 bills that you are pinning okay. on me. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to pay for this to get fixed, I exactly. guess, if I ever want to do anything with this dress later yeah, on. Yeah, that is a no-no for me. No. Hundreds S- only. In Romania, you're going to hide the bride. <laughs> Before the wedding, guests work together to playfully, oh, here we go, quote unquote, abduct the bride, whisking her away to an undisclosed location and demanding a ransom from the groom. Typical request, you may ask. A few bottles of alcohol, of course, or those looking to really make the groom sweat, singing a love song in front of the entire party. Now this one I am here for. That sounds really interesting. That so if sounds anyone like wants a to really fun day. Bring the Romanian tradition of kidnapping the bride and then requesting bottles of alcohol while make, singing a love song in front of everybody. Yeah, like let's hide her somewhere in the venue and see what goods we can get. Yeah. I mean... How far is the groom willing to go? He's like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I didn't want to get married that much anyway. Mm. It's terrible, terrible. We're monsters. Yeah. <laughs> No. In Sweden, they do what's called the stealing kiss. So whenever the bride leaves the table and or the room, any ladies that are near the groom are allowed to steal a kiss. So that can be literally like a peck on his cheek, a forehead kiss, whatever you want. If you want to go for the lips, go for it. Vice versa, whenever the groom leaves the room, all surrounding gentlemen are also free to plant a peck on the bride as well. This is, first off, so, not COVID-friendly. Not COVID-friendly. Also, just, like, not personal space-friendly. But if I was in Sweden and I knew this was a tradition, you best believe I'm literally going to pee. I'm going to eat. I'm going to do everything with my groom because I'm not getting freaking kissed by... Anybody. Uncle Sammy. I don't know. <laughs> Anyone. Aunt Susie. I don't give yeah. a fuck who it is. I am yeah. not letting you lay your lips on um, my face. Yeah. Or anywhere on my body. You're just leaving me open to threat. The only the only lips touching me are Byron's and Byron's. the tongue of my Oliver. dog. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's Ditto. it. Yeah. Ditto. That's, I'm, no. Just no. Yeah. That's a whole big old no. <laughs> All right. So then the last of the wedding traditions uh, from around the world is from Spain. And that's cutting the tie. At some Spanish weddings, the groom's friends will take scissors and chop up his tie, then <laughs> sell the pieces to guests to raise more money for the newlyweds because apparently this motherfucker has some cut up tie you can't look decent in. Yep. Um, he needs money for a new tie. The same practice is sometimes applied to the bride's garter as well. Anything for a few extra bucks. Oh my God, don't be this thirsty for <laughs> money. Like we know weddings are not cheap, but don't go and cut up a tie's Oh, groom's All right, tie. to the highest bidder, I have a piece of the groom's tie. $45, $45, uh-huh. I give you $45. If I was that bride, I'd be pissed. Wedding photos ruined. Can unless you imagine? it's like way at night, then fine, you do you, but. I mean, unless it was like Pam and Jim's wedding from the office yeah. and he cut the tie because like she ripped her veil, that's one thing. That was his own cho- like choosing, yeah. own tat. doing. Yeah, exactly. But if like grooms were just coming up and chopping pieces of the tie. Or your garter. Or garter, or dress. which also how they get to right? Is it like under the dress? Are they like going under the dress and like? <laughs> well, back cutting? then it was stockings, right? But, but still. still, yeah, a lot of questions. There, this list, which I mentioned, I will post for you guys, has forty three total wedding traditions around the world. We only picked our favorite ten. Otherwise, we'd be here forever reading them to you. So <laughs> yeah, if you want to see all of those. We will put the link in this video as well as on our podcast links. You can see it there. Um, but my mind is officially blown. 
There's so many things in there I would have yeah. never thought of. I'm never going to look at honeymoons the same ever again. Nope. Don't want to know where you're going anymore. Um, I mean, and maybe there'll be new tradition, tradition started going forward. I don't, I mean, maybe first yeah, looks things, are like the, the kind of thing. Things keep are, evolving over time. That is such a good point. Yeah. But keeping evil spirits away is number one. <laughs> what I've learned, evil spirits, no go. Hexes, no go. Fertility, <laughs> prosperity give me all the Wealth. money yep yep like that's where weddings all started yeah i mean it, it, it again like i said makes sense because weddings are not cheap but at the same yeah. time like <laughs> just, i don't know people she's gonna faint here fellas i can't i don't think i can we've lost her i really can't handle all of this information i'm like I, well it's not over I'm yet i'm just glad that it's not continuing into today yeah for a lot of them there's some are i mean obviously like the mob talking. mentality yes the mob mentality is so scary why would you invite all these people to your wedding and then they like, attack you <laughs> straight up jump you for a piece of your lace <laughs> back off that's my button bro go down the street yeah like go get buy a piece I of lace i know there. the seamstress down there like i can give you a good recommendation <laughs> my alterations were done down there my pieces are still probably there um so next for you guys we have superstitions and myths yes love this one because there are a lot yes so we picked just the basic ones that you hear in regards to every wedding so the first one let's just start with is rain on your wedding day good luck or bad luck what do you think good luck yeah i think so i also heard oh, many moons ago someone said that when you tell a bride like it's good luck to rain on your wedding day they're just saying that to calm her down because it's raining because it's raining and she's probably upset so you're just saying it but no it actually has a meaning so because when you get married you are tying the knot as you know you know you're tying yep. the little knot yep yep a knot that becomes wet is extremely hard to untie so you think of a fisherman's knot when it gets mm. wet you are not undoing that that thing is for life mm. so rain on your wedding day signifies the strengthening of your wedding over others so now naturally i'm upset that it didn't rain on my wedding day it almost day. did though I feel it like. almost it did was it overcast. got freaking cold out of nowhere but yeah. it didn't rain so my wedding tying knot is not at its max strength oh it is girl you don't have to wor rely on some rain on a wedding day on the superstition you guys just have a really really tightly tied knot we do yeah it's multiple ties <laughs> multiple ties it's knots on knots on knots berries like chewed it all together so it's literally yeah, just formed into one he lump probably sum. licked it and spit on it exactly so it's not the, the rain cool, it's cool. the animal saliva thanks for making me feel better <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of the knots so tying the knot the hand fasting ceremony interesting this ancient celtic practice which dates back to the medieval era literally binds couples together in matrimony by tying knots of cloth around their hands and so to become one i think this is cute yeah i feel like i have seen something like this the tying of the hands the yeah. rope around hands like totally i love it yeah i, I love the symbolism one that like the ribbon they tied around them said till death do us part and cute. i thought that was for photos i was like all up in there like, I mean, you know I was loving that. The details, mm, here for a good detail. And they were probably smiling. Yeah, they, no, no smiling on your wedding day. <laughs> um, the next superstition and myth is carrying the bride over the threshold, which is something that you normally don't get to see, obviously. It can happen either the night of the wedding, going up to their chambers, and or people when they buy a house or mm -hmm. take them home to your house, you'll get yep. this. But... The Romans considered it to be a very bad omen if the bride tripped over the threshold. Romans believed in many types of good and bad omens and even used symbolic house gods and spirits to ward off all kinds of evil. After the procession to the couple's new home, the Roman groom would carry his bride over the threshold to make sure she didn't trip. On the other hand, we think some of those new kidnapped wives wouldn't have gone... So willingly. <laughs> <laughs> just get them drunk and then you just pick their ass up and just bring them on carry in. carry her yeah. on in. Yeah. Put her on the bed. Oh, that's so funny. Also, <laughs> it makes sense because I would trip. Yeah. Knowing me. Too much to drink. You got a gown to carry. Um, <sighs> but also, I don't really know if I want to be carried. Yeah, I've only really seen this happen once. You could hit my head on the doorway. Yeah, that's You could make me feel when not as it. tiny as I feel. <laughs> If you struggle, you know, just, uh, or if you're too drunk and you try and lift your bride and then you fall. 
what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> that means you're just going to have really sore backs the next yeah. day. You're not going off to your honeymoon that next day if that's what's planned. Yeah. You are. Unless you're flying first class and maybe you're okay. A little massager. A little masseuse coming along with you. Yep. All right. So let's see. The next one is seeing the bride before the wedding. The tradition of not seeing your spouse before the wedding is exactly what it sounds like avoiding your partner before the ceremony starts. This dates back to when marriages were arranged and the bride and groom weren't allowed to see each other or meet and or meet each other until they were at the altar. Yeah. Just like fucked up. Yeah, it's and so it's scary. Like, and then on top of that, you had the veil on your face. So you probably couldn't see him very well and he couldn't see you. Makes you want to encourage first looks even more. Yeah. See your bride and groom ahead of time. Because you're choosing to marry them because you know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That just I mean, became way more romantic. I think so, too. I think, exactly. I, I We were just talking about in the last episode with first looks and stuff and Big how things. they are an advantage for logistics, but it's also, I think, really sweet when the couple has a moment alone together. And not just a moment, but, you know, Multiple, 15 yeah. to 30 minutes. More than least. you're going to get the rest of the day. Yeah, you don't really have much alone time. So this is like a really great way to get that and see yeah. each other and exchange words. Because I know for me... Byron, can, like, we talk to each other and we can bring each other down off the ledge if, like, we're just really upset about something or nervous, nervous or, yeah. you know. So on a wedding day, nerves are, are being racked. They're up at an all-time high. And so seeing your partner before you both walk down the aisle can definitely be a great thing. And I think it's overlooked a lot of times. People think, well, I should wait till, you know, because it's not going to be as emotional. But I literally think it's the opposite. I think it's more emotions. Yeah. And I will say from experience that even with a first look, I feel like it almost heightens the emotions during the ceremony. Yeah. Versus, because when it happens for the first time in the ceremony, you're trying to process seeing them. You're trying to process like those emotions, but you're also now embarrassed because everyone's watching you. You're just trying to process so, everything. You have so many people around yeah. you with their eyeballs on you. Give yourself a second situation to process separately. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about it. Yeah. Um, wearing white on the wedding day. Kind of, you know, gotten away from the pure whites. Or even whites in general. There's a, the f- like floral yeah. wedding dresses that are happening and oh. printed. I know. We need to get our hands on one of those. Mm. But white on a wedding day obviously symbolizes purity and virginity. There's a saying that goes. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to warm up for this. It's like my wrapping moment here. Married in white, you will have chosen all right. Married in gray, you will go far away. Married in black, you will wish yourself back. Married in red, you will wish yourself dead. Married in blue, you will always be true. Married in pearl, you'll live in a whirl. (laughs) Married in green, ashamed to be seen. Married in yellow, ashamed of the fellow. Married in brown, you'll live out of town. Married in pink, your spirits will sink. Oh, sink. (laughs) Sink, we should I just say sink. Yeah, Yeah, sink. But also, married in brown. Yeah. Who wants... Get married in brown and a poo dress. If it's like a cream color, that's different. Like this or is like great. A burnt this is like orange. a like a cream color. Yeah, this cardigan. Is like, a, like that's. Like, I feel um, like it's a version of like a brown, but like yeah. but classy. brown. I yeah, but think. brown, brown, like those. Yeah, no. Married in brown, you'll. Have I to have flush no it down. idea where the saying came from. Never heard it in my life, but I found it in an article, and I thought it was hilarious. So. <laughs> The fact that that's even like a saying is beyond yeah. my understanding. Also, married in red, wish yourself dead. <laughs> like, just wish yourself dead. If you wear you know red, what? just know. Over it. I also am here for a black wedding dress always. So how dare you? <laughs> married in well, black, wish yourself this. back. Where yeah. are we going? This is this is just a superstition. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Silly, stupid superstition. 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 Um. Yeah. The last one is probably the most well known, mm-hmm. which is the something old, new, borrowed, and blue. Blue. When I did do my research on this, it's all over the map. Yeah. Of where it I came imagine. from. I think that the mo- thing I found the most was originally it was just something borrowed. Okay. And then it kind of evolved from there. To more things. To more things and, you know. Maybe because people were kept tearing off things from, like, the dress and stuff. Like, I need more things. I need more. Give me more of your stuff. Give me more because you're going to take it anyways. Yeah, you're going to take it back. Um, I guess one thing I never really thought of was something borrowed is supposed to be from somebody that is in a successful, healthy marriage. It makes sense. Yeah. 
but it kind of has gotten away from that and it's just something borrowed from a family member or friend yeah so, which i don't think there's anything wrong with that either this is the best i could come up with just so we know yeah. just take note the tradition is based on an old english rhyme that dates back to 19th century Lancashire. Land, land, Lancashire? Uh, you know Lancashire. what? Your guess is as good as mine. Line, yeah. I just keep picking up these ones and I'm like, <laughs> I'm so I don't sorry. know. It describes the items a bride should have on her wedding day. Quote, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. A sixpence in your shoe. The exact meaning behind each trinket isn't totally clear, but there are some popular theories. Something old represented a tie to the past. Something new stood for hope and optimism for the future. Something borrowed from a happily married friend or relative was believed to bring good luck for the union and even fertility. The color blue was meant to ward off the evil eye. <laughs> oh, the evil eye. eye. And it also stood for love, purity, and fidelity. And the sixpence was intended to bring prosperity to the couple. I.e. more gifts. <laughs> gifts on gifts on gifts. And gifts on gifts, money on money, moolah on moolah. Yeah. Wow. I know. That's a, it's a lot for to, everyone to digest. To process. I'm still, I'm processing currently. Going to continue to process after this. <laughs> it's going to be weeks before we see her again. <laughs> I mean, I don't, well, I feel like, I don't know if I have like a favorite from all of that. Like just in general, the piece uh, or of like information. A history, yeah, something that stands out to you the most. Did, I get, yeah, I don't think I could get away from that honeymoon kidnapping <laughs> thing. I think that's just shook me to my core. I, I agree with that. I also would say... The garter toss. Yeah. I just like when things make sense. And for me, the garter toss makes sense because it was and is still the same meaning, right? A quote unquote consummation of your marriage. It's just great that people aren't knocking on your door as you're trying to consummate your marriage. Trying to steal your stockings, your undies, whatever it might be. I just, I like that. And she's just all, hee hee, hee, cute. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> such good information um, yeah though. so much and i hope that you guys learned a little bit something new that you didn't know about weddings your mind might have been blown that like we have gotten to the point in a society where weddings are much more commercialized and weddings are much more traditional and they are what they are but you didn't know where those wedding traditions started exactly and just like you said there's much more information out there which we will We'll be happy to share with everyone. Just didn't want it to be a three hour long episode <laughs> yeah, for everyone to, to listen to. So I might pick up this topic again in the future if we find something else is interesting. But I think it's just really great to know kind of the back end backstory of these things that people are doing that they don't even realize why. Yep. And now you can see where the evolution of new traditions are coming and mm-hmm. new myths and superstitions. And I'm here for it. I'm always here for the. I would love to go to another wedding in like a different part of the world and see one of their traditions. You know, I want to see the Congo wedding where no one is smiling, (laughs) and I want to (laughs) see. I mean, I want to go to where people originally eloped in Scotland. We gotta go. That that also was one of my favorites. Yeah, definitely gonna have to go there. That we definitely need to. Let's look up flights after this. (laughs) Next time we're gonna be recording in Scotland. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What do we drink in Scotland? Whiskey? Cool. We're going to Scotland. We're drinking whiskey. Or mead. We're drinking honey wine mead. I feel like I have to say it the whole way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's like honeymoon. We'll, we'll be on our honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't kidnap me. <laughs> Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> exactly. Well, cheers to another great... Oh, we didn't actually... There Ting. we go. Ting. To another great episode of Weddings Unedited. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. Thank you, guys. Hope you learned something new. And until next time, have a great day. Bye.